this is standard frame rate. And so if you're shooting uh, uh, anything for you know, web-based uh, use, um, or, or just play on the TV, 30 frames a second is probably where you want to be. Okay? Every television show, like TV news, sitcoms, soap operas, they're all shot at 30 frames a second. 24, why would we want 24? Who's going to use that? Movies. Filmmakers. And 24 frames a second is what the uh, cinematic cameras, film cameras, shoot at. And always have. And almost every movie that you've seen has probably been 24 frames a second. When The Hobbit comes out later this year, it's going to be the first one to go uh, 48. All right, let's focus. Sorry. Uh, Focusing with an SLR, this is one of your big differences between still and video shoot. You've got a lot of focus, okay? Does anybody even have a T4? A T4 on? No, okay. So we're all in the same boat as of right now, okay? Um, and I'll explain why in a second. Auto focusing, it is possible. Then you press your shutter button halfway down, or if you've got a 60D or higher, you press the, uh, the, the back button, uh, back AF or front button. And ideally, before you start recording, I'll show you why in a second. The other option is manual focus. This is where I live. It's for the video. Manually focus on the lens. You can magnify that, that image like I showed you before. You can grab your, your focus and then go. There are three in camera options for auto focus. There's live mode, and that reads off the camera's imaging sensor. Okay, so you press that, and I'll, I'll, I'll then, I, I can demonstrate this in a second. The, uh, the live mode, you've got live face detect, which does exactly what it says. You grab human faces. Generally, the closest one to the camera is where it will lock on to. This can be used to create advantage uh, during the interview situations. And then your quick mode. Uh, the fastest, hence the name, but a quick look will interrupt your, your shooting. Uh, unlike still in shooting, you cannot track uh, movement, moving subjects. Okay. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but uh, yeah, there is no, no servo AF as far as all that focus goes in movies. That's the biggest difference between these and camcorders. Camcorders are what they're designed to do continuously autofocus can be very accurate and very sharp. These guys cannot do it. So the T4 I has it. I'll show you uh, how the movie servo AF works in just a second. A smaller zone of that. And with the T4 I in a touch panel, you can actually touch anywhere along the panels and it will focus there, there, there. So it makes it very easy to do rack focus type of things. Pulling it in and out between subjects. Okay, uh, so this guy. Same thing. And it pops. Now, say I want to not go. I'll stop.
steering is always center weighted, no matter where you have your camera set. If you have it in a value if you have it in spot or partial metering, it doesn't matter. In video, it's always center weighted. So what does that mean? It looks at the entire scene. It evaluates the entire scene on, on the image, but it concentrates on what's in the center area to set its meter. This is important to note that if you're shooting a scene with a lot of bright lights in a corner or something, that's being actually taken into account by the camera. This is shot 160th of a second. Look at the motion. Very nice, smooth and predictable. Fast one on thousand. What happened to it? Right? It looks artificial. It looks choppy. Right? Let me show you those side by side. One sixtieth versus one one thousand. What do you want for a more traditional motion? Probably going to say at one one sixty. Okay. Aperture works the same way. Okay, you can use any aperture. Here's the thing: your camera doesn't want to change it. Why should? Hear the aperture opening and closing, and you're going to get exposure variations. Movie and video cameras, their lenses are designed to be very, very smooth aperture controls. And in fact, that's really the only the way to uh, change the light, is to, to, to ride the aperture. So you're constantly letting in more light or decreasing it. Uh, they're designed to work mechanically. Well, the apertures on our SLR lenses are digitally controlled, they're controlled by the camera. So as you go from one, one third stop to the next, it actually opens up, resets, and then goes back. So you actually get shifts if you change the aperture while you're shooting. It's one of the biggest differences. Okay? So we don't want to change the aperture while we're shooting. In any of the automatic modes, uh, that's the last thing the camera's going to change. So the priority, if you're in automatic exposure mode, is going to be ISO, that's always going to be automatic in an auto exposure mode. Then it's going to change the shutter speed. Then it's going to change the aperture as a last resort. Okay. Like I said, they work the same way. The still images are wide apertures, let more light in, much easier to blur out the background and get that, that, that really beautiful depth of field uh, that, that we so want. Okay, very easy to isolate subjects. Small actors, just the opposite. Then the light give you long depth of view, a sharper background. Take a look at this example here. That's a 50 millimeter one two. That's a 50 f16. Okay. We're gonna just loop this a couple times. So just pay attention. Now, one, two, those berries can start out as in focus, but as the wind moves them, they go out of focus. Right? If you're doing an interview with somebody and you want to, you're tempted to shoot, say, a 50 millimeter lens and have one, two, you've got to realize that you can get their eye in focus, but their nose will be out of focus. Right? The first thing I will do with a lens is try to start it about at 5.6. That's going to allow for uh, the person to have a little bit of natural motion and retain focus throughout. Okay? So we should one, two. Right? Yeah, you can blur out, you can isolate the backgrounds, but focusing is challenging. So even, even with a 50 millimeter lens at 16, you're still getting not everything in full focus. Okay? So that's how aperture relates to your video. I talked about automatic exposure. Totally automatic. Everything is done for you. This is great for running gun. You're doing a wedding, you're doing a reception, you're going around the area, and automatic exposure is fine. Any production video is going to be a manual exposure. And I'm going to show you how to manually expose a scene. Uh, I think you will find it just as easy. The, uh, the ISO, it's possible to have that rock. So when I turned on the camera the other minute, 
in automatic exposure, what options do you have? First of all, where is the automatic exposure on the camera? What modes? Green box, P, AV, and TV are all automatic exposures. So, how does the camera meter? What does it see? Reflected light at about what percentage? 18 percent. That's what the camera's meter all the time, even in video. All right, so it's looking at the scene going, eh, about 18 percent. And uh, here you go. Right? What if we don't want that? What do we do in still images? What feature do we have? It's going to be exposure compensation, right? That's the same thing here. Right? Lighten that up, darken it up, whatever you want to do, you've got it. Exposure compensation works the same way. How do we do that? How do we expose 